Hi everyone. The fuel flap actuator on my Polo failed recently, which means uh, it would not uh, lock itself when I press the center locking. And I tried spraying a bit of uh, WD-40 through the hole on the unit and still it would not work. So that's when I decided to get a replacement from uh, Bootmo. It cost me about uh, 2600. And when I received this unit, upon closer inspection, I found uh, a mechanism here, a tab, which sort of moves up and down. That's actually contained within this uh, rubber uh, enclosure here. So I dug a little deeper on the internet and figured out that uh, this particular tab is actually given for uh, the emergency fuel flap release mechanism, which is there in the high-end vehicles like the Audi and all. This one is from the Audi A4. You can see one end of the emergency cord connected to the actuator and the other end for pulling inside the boot. This is the extract from the Audi Q7 Zusa manual and it shows the emergency fuel flap release mechanism explained. You know, it could be there in the Tiguan and uh, other uh, Volkswagen vehicles. I'll leave that for the owners to uh, find out. But uh, notwithstanding that, uh, to operate this fuel flap release, what you need is a cord like this. So basically what happens is you need to have this uh, cord inserted like this so how it works is uh, you have this cord connected here and this you lead it to the trunk and uh, when the actuator fails or it's not able to open it all you need to do is pull this down and when you pull it down this actuator ram moves up and down without the electrical input i'm going to show you how this works in the polo now i'm not sure uh, why volkswagen chose to do away with uh, such an inexpensive part it would have helped uh, during emergencies. I know of a lot of cases in our forum where uh, the users faced issues with their uh, flap not opening when they wanted to do a refuel. Uh, something like this would have uh, helped them out, I'm very sure. So I'll show you how this is done. It's pretty simple. Now to source this, you can uh, get it from, um, you know, eBay. I sourced this from a Chinese seller from eBay and he shipped it with one of this actuator itself. I was not able to get this cord alone. So it's pretty cheap. I got it for uh, about 11, 12 uh, US dollars. Uh, in cases where uh, there's an emergency, it's going to definitely help. So let's see how this is installed. So guys, as you can see, my fuel led actuator fails to work despite putting uh, WD-40 on it. I'll lock it here. So I had to replace this actuator. So I'll show you how to remove this uh, fuel lid uh, unit from this. It's actually pretty simple. You need a T20 Torx screwdriver. There's a Torx screw here. You need to remove this uh, fuel lid uh, off. And Take it out from there. Don't forget to screw the cap back, otherwise dust and uh, it will start vaporizing. So this is the fuel lid actuator and it just comes off like this. Now you'll also notice there's a grommet there. Notice this grommet right here. You'll have to push it from there and it'll come off. You'll have to take the connector out. Now I'll show you how to access the connector. Now, this is your rear right uh, boot liner. Pull it out. Now, this is the connector for that. Now, forget about all this mess here because uh, I've done a few retrofits like uh, camera and things like that. So, so all you got to do is pull this connector out. There are two tabs here, like these two tabs. So, it comes out from this connector. Guide it through this hole right here. Now what you got to do is pull this uh, grommet off from this. So this is your uh, stock fuel actuator which has come off. Now we'll install the new one. But my new actuator now also has uh, an emergency fuel release as well. 
you also need to lead this uh, tap from the grommet here so what you'll do is you'll make a small incision and uh, lead this tap from the connector end to the actuator side because this is the one that's going to get attached to the body and there should be a means of uh, you know connecting this uh, cord to the actuator unit from the trunk side so make an incision like this The cord is now inserted through the grommet here. You can see a small hole there. Just don't make it any big because otherwise dust will start, uh, you know, creeping inside. And you have to connect this to the tab right here. The tab is connected. You can see that it moves properly. Now let's install this in the car. Now you have the new actuator unit. Guide the connector and this uh, end of the cord through that hole you see there. It will come to the trunk side. Now the next part is to insert this grommet into the hole. It's going to be a bit of an exercise. As you can see, it's now seated well. Once you have connected the grommet, Install the unit and uh, replace the cover. Once that's done, you have to replace the screw. So you are now set it. Uh, we'll connect the connector here. This is that connector. And ensure that it's a firm uh, fit. It only connects in one direction because there's a tab on the connector. Once that's done, I suggest you do a check before you connect and replace everything. Now let's test the emergency working arrangement. Uh, I'm locking the car. the cord there you go so that's how you release this in the event of uh, the central locking you know jamming this uh, actuator and it doesn't open you can pull that cord and uh, get the flap to open once you've completed the job and before uh, folding everything back in place you can just uh, tuck in the end of the cord here so you know what to pull here is the one on the other actuator, the Chinese one. You can see the actuator moving. So basically what happens is now it's in the lock position. When you're unable to open it, you pull this tab down manually and that retracts that uh, tab and therefore you can press this. I hope uh, this was useful. Thank you.